Close your eyes and imagine you're at the center of a magnificently lush green forest enthralled by the most breathtaking waterfall you've ever seen. A cool morning breeze, the sound of flowing water, and the enchanting chorus of the local fauna rejuvenating your spirit. Just then, you begin to hear a faint, annoying, but all too familiar sound. Gradually, nature's symphony begins to sound more like a whirling whistle. Suddenly, you awake from your dreams only to realize the noise is erupting from the nearby highway. It's the sound of sirens in morning rush hour traffic. Unfortunately, if you're like me, you've likely had a similar dream. Living in a boring, ugly place is not the most inspirational setting for landscape photography. However, there's nothing wrong with dreaming, but we have to be realistic. Not all of us have a photographer's paradise in our backyard. Coming to terms with reality of what our landscape has to offer is you know, its important to prevent stifling creativity. So what can we do about it? First, embrace local opportunities by thoroughly canvassing the area that you live in. Visit your local chamber of commerce. They often have valuable information on local tourism and popular attractions. Of course, social media can offer ideas on potential photographic opportunities. Often, local hotels provide a plethora of literature. You usually go in and you'll find that near the front desk. And that may be helpful in, in helping you to find interesting locations to maybe photograph. Ask the locals. This is super important. Every location has its secret hidden gems. In fact, I lived in eastern Kentucky for years before learning of a place called Lakiji Rock. And I love that rock. And now it's a location that I frequently visit when I'm in town. Despite searching and scouring our backyards for stunning landscapes, let's face it, some areas are just plain ugly. Therefore, one may have little choice but to magnify the situation. In other words, one may need to break out the long lens and zoom in. Having a variety of focal lengths to choose from does provide options. In fact, I made a video titled, What is the Best Focal Length for Landscape Photography? I'll leave a link to that at the end of the video and in the video description. But we have to use the tools that we have available. For me, nothing beats a grand vista. And I think that appeals to my, my love of nature. But using a long lens does allow one to focus more on the smaller details of a scene. In an ugly environment, this can help eliminate distracting or unwanted elements like parked cars, buildings, signs, or even people. Indeed, skills gained from having to look closer and work harder to see the beauty can make one a much better photographer. If landscape photography were so easy, everyone would have a YouTube channel. Well, let me think about that for a minute. And I think most landscape photographers do have a YouTube channel. Seriously, we have to embrace what we have and devise ways to incorporate it into our photography. For example, maybe instead of cropping out that unwanted building that you have in the, in the background, try including it in your composition. Make it part of the story that your image is telling. In the past, I would have never considered shooting something like an old rundown house or building, but we've all seen similar images that are not only visually appealing, but ones that convey an influential and profound story behind the image. Remember, a well-composed image can say a thousand words. Actually, when you think about it, not having those snow-covered mountains in your backyard that everybody wants, maybe it's a blessing in disguise. It makes us pay closer attention to detail. Having to look closer can inspire creativity and uniqueness in one's photography. Many of my favorite images are hometown shots. Honestly, some of the areas that I've lived in, maybe they weren't the most beautiful places, but they helped me change the way I see the world and for the better. Something else to watch out for in your photography is complacency. Try to change up your perspectives and maybe experiment with different aspect ratios. Complacency is the nemesis of creativity. Seeing everything every day without seeing anything, it leads to nothing creative. In fact, it reminds me of a quote. Creativity is piercing the mundane to find the marvelous. Bill Moyers. I think it's all in the hands of the photographer. We make our destiny. It's like Ansel Adams said, you don't take a photograph, you make it. Don't forget to check out that video that I mentioned earlier about focal length. Here's a link to that right here. There's also a link in the video description. If you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do subscribe, hit that little bell icon so that you're notified of any future videos that I post. Also, leave a comment and share your thoughts. And as always, if I don't see you down the road, maybe I'll see you on the trail.